Um, cool. So today we've got um, Josh Luber. Um, a lot of you guys know him as the co-founder of StockX, um, Zero Cool, Fanatics Collectibles, um, and now he's got a brand new platform. If you've been following my Instagram, uh, Ghostwrite. Really excited. I've got one in my hands that we're going to talk about in a second. Um, but I would love to kind of get your get your thoughts on like what was the original inspiration for Ghostwrite and kind of how it came from StockX to now Ghostwrite. Well, I mean. Thanks for having me, and yeah. uh, and congratulations on the you know continued <laughs> evolution of of, uh, of your business. Um, you know, Ghostwrite is after the last two business I've run couldn't be more simple, right? Um, you know, but all these products, and, and we'll talk about Ghost, Ghostwrite specifically. But you know, at StockX we started with sneakers, we moved into streetwear and collectibles. We were actually the the first marketplace other than eBay, really. To sell bare bricks, um, certainly still StockX probably has a, a, a larger um, inventory of bare bricks than than anywhere else. Um, Fanatics Collectibles was trading cards, where we you know quickly evolved the trading card market. But all these products, collectible toys, trading cards, sneakers, they're, they're all the same, right? They're all supply and demand. They're all collectability, resellability, um, and um, and for me, this is really just a continuation, you know, of the same big idea, the same things we've been trying to do. But from a personal standpoint, now I get to to create a, a toy brand and get deep into it. Um, you know, Ghostwrite, which uh, you have to be following closely, and I certainly appreciate um, you and anyone who is following as we're, we're slowly rolling this out. But Ghostwrite is the easiest way to describe it. This is the next bear brick. Right? Yes. This is the next blank canvas collectible um, platform toy. As you know, almost all collectible toys, almost all designer toys are IP. They're characters. It's Cause, it's Astro Boy for kids. It's Paw Patrol and, and or, you know, G.I. Joe and, and He-Man, right? It's all IP, except, except Bear Brick, right? Bear Brick is just a shape. It's a, it's a human body with a bear head. Um, and because of that, you know, I think it's one of the reasons why Bear Brick has been one of the most successful collectible toy brands, you know, for 25 years. In fact, maybe the most successful because they get to work with all the different brands and, and companies and, and artists um, outside of just a, a straight, you know, IP um, uh, and character. Um, and by the way, it's great talking to you and to, to your audience because you guys understand this better than anyone. Whereas for the rest of the world, I've spent a lot of time trying to educate people on why Bear Brick has been so successful, what that means to be a platform toy. And so for us, you know, Ghostwrite is the, the evolution of that, right? Ghostwrite is, you know, it's it's a kid wearing a crown. I mean, it can be this where you don't even know what this design is, or, or it can be this, which is, you know, Mike Amiri, who's a fashion designer. But it's a it's a it's a kid with a crown like a bear brick. There's no gender. The ghost itself is not a character. Um, it's just meant to be uh, a blank canvas. And um, we started to make some. We haven't sold any yet. Yeah. We likely won't sell any for a while. Um, but we're slowly starting to build that. And and you can, you know, sort of follow us on our Instagram for now. Quick clarifying question: Is it is it ghost or ghost right? Like is ghost right the brand so, and the character is ghost? So the so the brand is called Ghost Right, and then mm -hmm. we refer to the characters as ghosts. Okay. Um, which uh, is sort of this is intentionally um, not necessarily a ghost. I, I don't know if it, um, it's it's like I said, it's a kid with a, a crown, uh, but we refer to those as ghosts. And but the the ethos of the brand and the reason it's called Ghost Right is, you know, these are meant to be a blank canvas. So these are toys that are meant to tell other people's stories. Yeah. So then we refer to the, the the toys as ghosts. Although there was one Ghost Right branded ghost. Not unlike in the beginning, there were some, you know, bear brick branded uh, uh, bears. And so that would be like the ghost, right? Ghost as we now get. Is that, is yes. The ghost, the ghost? Right. Which is why it's confusing okay. to you. Yes. So you have, you have, we, we made four designer con. We can show this now as we're talking about it. Yeah. Yes. We made a ghost, right? Branded ghost for designer con. Yeah, uh, and um, what was fun was we were like, all right, well, we don't have anything to sell. So let's make a giant display. So we decided to make, if, that, if anyone was there, and saw this 15-foot ghost sitting you know, on the ground that was sort of cut in half. And then everyone wanted to, well, we should have some to at least give away. So we made, um, I think we only ended up making 10 of those. Yeah. Designer Con uh, branded Ghost Right Ghosts and, uh, and gave them to some people, including yourself. So yeah, appreciate it. Uh, you know, I'm curious of, of your thoughts as seeing this across a lot of other toy brands. You know, mm -hmm. Bear Brick obviously uses the nomenclature 100%, 400%, 1,000%, 1, 
a few other brands do. And we kind of went back and forth. We ultimately decided to stick with that nomenclature because the sizes would be identical. Sure. Um, and then, you know, the big one, we had to figure out what the dimensions ended up being. It was 1350, but I don't know, like, have you, are, are there, um, what, what's your gut on sort of like people sort of understanding of that nomenclature versus just calling it like an 11 inch figure? Yeah, I, th I think the one, the thing that's interesting to me is that the 11, the 11 inch is American. Um, so looking at the bare bricks, like every other bare brick is listed in centimeters, millimeters, et cetera. So that, that cultural difference right there is just hard. Yeah. Uh, and I think Popmart did a really good job. I think their, their Molly series, they do a lot of 100, 400, a thousand percent. And they just, I think they're just standardized on the bare brick sizing. So they're also like 27 and a half, 11 and 2.75, yep. whatever that is. Um, so I think being able to use those measurements as kind of like the guideline for those sizes, people just know if you go, oh, I've got a thousand percent toy in their head, they're like, oh, it's about 28 inches. Cool. Unless I, I didn't measure this, if this 400% is 11 inches. It is. It, or, it okay. should, it should be exactly the same as, as, uh, you know, bare brick 400% everything else. But that was the thought process we went through. Plus, yep. you know, it automatically fits on, I'm, I'm looking at your size shelf where you've, it'll yep. line up perfectly for the shelves where someone's already got 400% bare bricks. Honestly, that was a huge part of it, right? Like both in terms of the design that we make something that is worthy to sit next to these products, but also it's like, you can't start messing with people's shelf spaces that like, I already have it all set up like that. Cool. Um, so, I mean, like you said, you've been releasing these kind of ad hoc little customs releases here. I think there's about 20 to date, um, give or take. Um, how, how do you kind of see that evolving over 2024? I mean, you said you're going to take your time, build out the brand. Um, yeah. How do you think that's going to evolve over the year into potentially production series? Yeah, I mean, look, there's a lot of reasons why um, just if you're a business and you have to make a product and you need to sell it and make money, you can't necessarily do this and can't necessarily move as slow as we're going to want to move. Um, but I think it's the right approach. Um, I'm fortunate, you know, having now seen this through StockX and, and Fanatics Collectibles and with these other categories that, again, like I mentioned, are are almost identical in terms of the the consumer and how they behave. Um, and so right now, all the ghosts we're making are all in small numbers to be given away to, to friends and family. Um, mm -hmm. The largest run we've done to date was um, the very first one we did was with Eastside Golf, mm -hmm. uh, which is a, a golf apparel brand. And, and we took their logo and we actually made um, 40 of these. We made 36 to use as the tee box markers for their tournament. Right. So that's the only reason we even made that many. We made a couple extras, but so um, otherwise, uh, after this, the most that we've made for any is ten, which was the designer con one, and we just wanted to have enough to give away. But like this, for example, um, was made for Mike Amiri, who's a fashion designer, the brand Amiri. There's mm -hmm. two of these that exist. We made one for him and one for me, uh, and that's it. And we actually made 100% as well, but I only made 100%. So he's got the 100% and the 400. I have just the 400%. Yeah. Um, as you know, there's a production lag. So as we slowly make the um, promotional ones for the, the brands and companies that we want to, we're also already in the process of planning the, the first release that'll come out. Um, we will start selling them. Um, I think right now it'll be sometime in Q3. Mm -hmm. uh, but even when we do, it'll be really small numbers, 20 units, 30 units, you know, somewhere in, in that range as we start. And again, it's meant to just sort of very slowly and methodically build that brand. And then we will at some point step on the gas. We will at some point, you know, make enough so that everyone can buy one if they want. But that may just happen to be, you know, later rather than sooner. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Let's talk about this. I've already, I've already unboxed him. The, awesome. The ghost, the ghost ghost, right? Um, the packaging is pretty unique. It feels like um, it's kind of like a sneaker box. And we can show that a little yeah. bit. Uh, In fairness. Yeah. It's just, that's so early. And we should show it because, like, I, I think this is as much a good um, conversation about startups and, and and starting companies you have sample boxing our permanent boxing isn't even done yet but it was more important to get ghosts out to get them to the people so you know we went out and created some just some basic sample boxing just so we had something yeah right so we've got super plain black box um i think the thing that's interesting so it's got the flap to get over another flap um and then i love the laser cut foam um, every clamshell I have has led to a figure breaking or the vinyl sweating into it or something like that over time, especially if I've stored them over the years. Um, so cut foam is 100% the best way to go I've, I've ever seen out of any of this packaging. Um, 
I don't personally display my boxes with my collection, but a lot of people do. Is that going to be something you, you think you're going to lean into with the package design where the art piece is part of the packaging and it's kind of meant to be maybe even displayed together? Yeah, exactly. This is um, the sort of next evolution of the sample packaging, right? Mm -hmm. And so now we obviously have some branding on the front. Um, you know, we have some information on the back, um, which can can vary depending on, on the product. Um, sure. But, you know, what you have is, you know, this idea of uh, it being a, a brand, of being a, a toy that tells other people's stories, mm -hmm. just it's a very sort of archival concept, right? Um, you know, we think that done right, ghosts can be used to sort of mark moments. Like this outfit happened, I keep bringing up the Mike Amiri one. This <laughs> happens to be the outfit that he wore to one of his fashion shows, right? Sure. So this actually like marks like a moment in time for him. And you know, these guys don't wear outfits twice anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so like this, like marks a moment in time and you have this sort of like archival nature of like how the information is displayed. Right. And then, you know, on the inside, you know, same thing, you know, you have sort of the cut foam, right. For it to sit in there. Um, but you know, this stuff will evolve. Um, you know, this is very much a, a work in progress, but we want ghosts out in the world. We want people to have and talk about them, but we yeah. want to be able to have these conversations and figure out to your point, like, yeah, like maybe we do want them to be there and, and stay sealed in the box. Right. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Um, so getting getting to kind of getting them out in the world, I love the uh, thousand percent collabs you did with Lockmaster. Um, I saw them pop up 3D Retro, um, Toy Tokyo, yeah. um, how, how did that come about and why you like synced up with them? Yeah, I mean, I, I'm a fan. Um, so I actually owned a, a Lockmaster's piece that I bought um, at uh, five points a year or two prior. Mm -hmm. um, and as we were getting started, I had the Lockmaster's piece in my house. Um, and I'd met Fleet when when I bought it from him back then, and I just I was like, you know what? Let me see if, if he can make one. I mean, it was very organic, you know, sort of very natural. And um, and he's like, sure. And so we just started making them, and we decided to make you know a handful in different colors specifically to give to some of those toy stores. I mean, obviously, it's you know helpful to have it sitting above the register at Toy Tokyo and and having this sort of sample not for sale. So we we made ten different colors. We gave it to ten different people, all not for sale. Um, not necessarily planning on on making any of those to sell yet. Um, but like I said, we're just a fan of the brand and, and thought it was a cool thing. And also, as you know, working through the, the various um, production um, options, mm -hmm. for him to be able to make that here in the States for us quickly is a pretty good option. So it's good. That's awesome. Um, I'd love to take a minute to jump back to Ghost. Yeah. Um, um, what are your thoughts about other platforms that kind of have the same basic shape, but kind of shy away from it, depending on the artist's vision. So like Dunny's where they do something really elaborate or, you know, other other kind of bigger platforms um, where there's still a, a loose sense of the original platform, but an artist has taken an entirely different direction. Do you think you're open to that for production stuff? Yeah, I mean, look, the short answer to that is you're sort of open to everything as, as you evolve the brand. I will say, you know, Dunny's a really good example. Maybe the only other example besides Bear Brick of a true, you know, blank canvas production, you know, platform toy that's had that level of success. These are your three real, like true platforms, you know, it's Bear Brick, Dunny, and now Ghostwrite. And so I think what we can do is take a lot of learnings from Bear Brick and Dunny into Ghostwrite and some of the things we'll do and some of the things we won't, but also take a lot of learnings from sneakers and streetwear and these other places where you have real collectability, real scarcity. You know, the short answer to your question is it's all on the table to yeah. figure out and, and take the best of it. But we're in a really good position where we get to have 25 years of bare brick and 20 years of Dunny and and 100 years of trading cards to try to figure out the best way. Nice. So you said blind, blind boxes. Is there a possibility of a, a ghost rate like blind box? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You know, I, I think I only have 100% around here. Yeah. Um, yeah. This is a this actually happens to be the a pattern that Pharrell wore at his first Louis Vuitton show. My son obviously um, is convinced that this is a um, Minecraft. Minecraft, yeah, uh, which is fine, right? Uh, we certainly are in the process of figuring out, you know, what is the right way to do blind boxes, um, yeah. you know, in terms of how many go in a box, what do the chase elements look like? We're going to create a blind box to give away. Obviously, there's much more work that goes involved in that, and you have to make a certain quantity, and mm -hmm. you know, we don't want to, um, you know we don't want to make hundreds or, or, you know, thousands of cases. So we got to, we're trying to manage through that and, and figuring it out. Um, so speaking of the blind boxy thing, um, is there a set of artists that you're 
really excited to potentially work with or or do you already have some lined up that you could even share yeah i mean you know i the only ones i should really talk about are, are the ones we've already made um uh ghost for um yeah, yeah. there are so many <laughs> that we want to work with and yeah, yeah. Um, you know, we have most of 2024 sort of already um, lined up. Mm -hmm. um, a couple I'll share that we had, that we made um, promotional for. It's great. Like, so this is a brand that a lot of people probably don't know, which is called Rocky's Matcha. Um, mm -hmm. And this is a sort of like a high-end matcha brand. You see like the top of this is just beautiful, you know, the way they've done that. And like, you know, this is a brand and people that are extremely relevant in like the sneaker streetwear fashion world mm -hmm. and i like a lot of those places where we can cross over make something that's just objectively just like really pretty um mm -hmm. i love this blue i love you know the way that looks um and so you know you can go to the instagram and, and see a bunch of these other ones um, um I, I can say because um it's on the instagram mm -hmm. you know we have relationships and licenses with the nba and, and major league baseball um and so you see there's there's two on there one's a basketball one's a baseball um and we're working through with them you know what's the right way to to create them are we going to create like a full blind box set um will there be you know just 400 percent, just thousand percent and um and then what does it look like you know i that this is the fun place to be is like because we can bring in other artists to uh to collaborate on that yeah. but you know look at like funko funko is a very specific design right every funko has the same look um as opposed to um you know the bare bricks but like check this out like this is yeah. this is i mean it's almost comical how bad this is and i'm kind of i'm not trying to like by the way i'm a huge fan of bare bricks and i have a ton of them and and a lot of my love but like this is so bad and so um i think there's a huge opportunity to sort of take some of these learnings and figure out like what's the best way to to work with the nba and the nba players to to create ghosts and stuff like that so that's a lot of the conversations going on as we move forward to, to do that yeah I, I, there's a lot of nba guys recently who have actually been showcasing their designer toys online so it'd be interesting to see which ones like really want to lean into that and be like oh i need my ghost yeah. right in my ver like i want to be part of that process yeah That'd yeah so the old the very well, at this point it's a very old model um was you know kind of releasing a platform and having a big custom show like toy art gallery and you know kid robot used to do that back in the day even clutter i think did some recently um any thoughts on kind of trying to curate a, a big custom show for some part of a launch in q3 when you're ready to kind of sell the production piece as well yeah i mean it certainly won't be for the for the launch right the launch okay, will be um very um quiet for lack of a, a better word right i mean almost everything that we sell for the, in the beginning will be you know d to c through our site um there will be a couple you know um director exclusives that that show up in stores um but um as we then evolve i think 2025 i know 2025 we will start to step on the gas both in terms of the number of releases and the size and scale of those releases as we get to that point then you probably might see more external you know marketing and and you know brand events um and look I, i'll say we don't need to go into all the details and all the math but most of what we sell direct will be leveraging a lot of the same things that we did at StockX and um at fanatics and zero cool which is using variable pricing and letting the market set the price for the things that we sell yeah. um, i just think that's the right way for collectibles to be bought and sold and um and so some of that will come into play as, as we start to release products too awesome well that's this has been great man i really appreciate uh getting to know a little bit more ghost right um everyone can follow you on instagram are you on like TikTok and pinterest and everything or what's the best yeah, way to right to now like we're, we're just on instagram uh we have a twitter account i don't think we've actually posted anything to it the ghost right instagram account is definitely sort of the center of the world for now and uh we'll slowly start to expand out from there that's great that's man uh can't wait to follow the updates and uh hopefully see some uh some product people can purchase in q3 Awesome. Thank you very much. Good talking to you. Appreciate it, man. All right. Okay.